Hello everyone! Have you ever heard of a computer power supply unit made in the USSR? I mean serious switching power supplies with decent power, equipped with all necessary protections. About power supplies that you can still plug into an average computer today, and everything will work perfectly. Make yourselves comfortable, as the video will be interesting and, I think, informative. I'm sure most of you have never seen or even heard of such power supplies before. It's interesting, it's unique, and it was made entirely with Soviet components during the late USSR period. A brief backstory. These power supplies surfaced on the channel Remonter Lubidol. Later, my subscriber Maxim bought one of these units and sent it to me for review. And to be honest, I had never heard of such units myself. But it turns out, they existed. Manufactured in Ukraine, the dating on the boards tells us it's the end of 1991, and many components have the same date 1991. The newest ones are dated February 1992. The entire component base is Soviet. Judging by the foreign inscriptions, it's possible these units were also exported. This power supply weighs almost 2 kilograms. The form factor is standard with a power of 200 watts. It provides four output voltages, two power rails 12 and 5 volts, with currents of 7.5 and, and 20 amps respectively, and negative low current lines of minus 5 and minus 12 volts. Later, we will naturally turn on this power supply, see how it works, how it handles stabilization across all power rails, and what load the unit can handle overall. But for now, let's open it up and see what they've packed inside. I think you, like me, are very interested in seeing the internals. First of all, I would like to point out that the power supply case is made of sheet metal with a thickness of 1.2 millimeters. The lid alone weighs almost 400 grams. It's immediately clear that they didn't try to cut costs on the construction, but instead made it as high quality and reliable as possible, unlike many modern ones. Inside, there are two beautiful boards that are connected to each other with metal standoffs. Let's take the boards out of the case. Notice the thickness of the fiberglass 2.35 mm, and it is indeed fiberglass. I immediately like that all connections are on connectors. The unit can be disassembled in service without using a soldering iron. It's impossible to mix up the connector connections provided, of course, that you pay attention. On the top board, we have the control elements and the power switches of the inverter. The bottom board is the power board. It houses the input and output units of the source and the additional power transformer. I would like to draw your attention to the beautiful silkscreen and the meticulously aligned components. It's truly a sight to behold. The soldering is definitely done by hand, very meticulous and beautiful. All the flux has been completely washed off and all the power planes are additionally tinned. All transformers have moisture protection. Many components here are not just standard consumer grade, but military grade, which naturally increases the lifespan of the source. The KM series capacitors catch the eye. There are several transistors with gold plating. If it fell into the hands of vandals, they would probably ruin such a work of art just for a couple of KM capacitors. I'm not exaggerating when I call it a work of art. It is entirely handmade and crafted elegantly and thoughtfully. All the components are ours, not a single foreign one, truly not a single one. I tried for a long time to find one, but I didn't, it's all ours. Overall, this power supply can be installed in any average computer right now and it will handle it. You just need to change some connectors. I partially copied the schematic to understand how it is constructed and how much it differs from modern ones. I didn't copy the control system, so in front of you is only the power section without some small components that don't change the essence. So only the main parts are here. Anyone knowledgeable in the field has already noticed the classic half-bridge topology here, on which most modern computer power supplies are built. The controller manages the power switches through a matching transformer, which is located on the control board. Another small transformer is a current transformer. The current protection is built on its basis. The secondary voltage from this transformer is rectified and goes to the load, resistor, which also serves as the current sensor. With an excessively large load on the output or in the event of short circuits, there is a surge of current in the primary circuit. As a result, the voltage on the secondary winding of the current transformer increases, as does the voltage drop across the current sensor. When the voltage on the current sensor reaches the limit, the controller will shut down the circuit. The power transistors are an A23 package, Soviet KP934A. These are in-channel field effect transistors with a drain source voltage of 450 volts and a current of 10 amperes. 
Just so you know, transistors with similar characteristics are used in high-end modern power supplies with a power output of up to 700 watts. The input section also commands respect. Everything here is done smartly. At the input, there is a line filter with a common mode choke and appropriate capacitors, a thermistor, and of course a fuse. It's rated at 6.3 amperes. The contacts have darkened a bit, but that's nothing. By the way, as far as I know, the contacts of such fuses are silver-plated. Correct me if I'm wrong. Next are the half-bridge capacitors. There are four capacitors, each with 220 microfarads. Each pair is connected in parallel to increase the total capacitance. And then these assemblies are connected in series to form a midpoint, which is connected to one of the leads of the primary winding of the power transformer. Power to the second lead of the same transformer comes from the junction of the transistors through a coupling capacitor and a current transformer. The power transformer is a pulse transformer, quite decent. There is a copper shield over the core. The secondary circuit here is classic. There are powerful rectifiers on the 5 and 12 volt lines. Modern computer power supplies use diode assemblies with a common cathode. That is, in one assembly there are two diodes, and such an assembly forms a complete rectifier. In the Soviet era there was nothing like this. Instead, they installed separate diodes here, but they are connected with a common cathode. On the 5 volt line, the rectifier consists of Shockey diodes KD2998G. Despite their compact size, these are quite powerful diodes with a current of 30 amperes and a reverse voltage of 45 volts. Nothing more is needed here. On the 12 volt line, there are KD2997B diodes. These are some of the best diodes in this configuration 30 amperes, reverse voltage of 100 volts, and they can operate at frequencies up to 100 kilohertz. The heat sinks for the rectifiers, considering the stated specifications, are quite good and very attractive. And this is the group stabilization choke, a robust solid choke on a U-shaped core. Let's move on to the control board. Here, as mentioned earlier, there are a couple of transformers, a matching transformer and a current transformer. They are also encapsulated and fully waterproof. The entire power source is actually built around the KR1021KH1B microchip for which technical documentation can be found. Apparently, this is a specialized multifunctional microchip for power supply management. You can read the list of what this microchip is capable of yourself. It is packed with all sorts of protections, including a separate input for current protection, soft start, and is also equipped with its own reference source, oscillator, and error amplifier. In short, a pretty decent Soviet PWM controller with all the amenities, how do you like that, SG3525? Although it shouldn't be compared to the SG, as the SG is more precise, has a powerful output stage, and a very high operating frequency. Here, the output current of the microchip is only 40 milliamps. It's also important to note that the microchip can operate in cold temperatures down to minus 10, and its own current consumption is less than or equal to 20 milliamps. There's a knob on the board, and it's not a simple one. It's a high-reliability multi-turn trimmer resistor C5-2V. With this trimmer, you can adjust the output voltage within certain limits. On this same board, we have a voltage regulator Crenate B for 12 volts. This is not an imported 7812 regulator, but a true orthodox Krenka. This here is an iron network transformer. It's used here as a standby type. More precisely, it's not exactly a standby, but a source powering the control system. On the secondary winding, this transformer provides about 24 volts. Then this voltage is reduced by the crankas, which form the secondary power circuits. The cooling fan is standard, attached to the case with screws and nuts. By the way, it's not on bushings like cheap mass-produced items, but on ball bearings. Blows, let me tell you, like nobody's business. However, it's quite noisy. From 12 volts, the consumption is 0.2 amperes. I think many will be interested in the condition of the capacitors. We deolder a few and check their characteristics. 
a large electrolytic capacitor, 200 volts, 220 microfarads, capacitance 227 microfarads, leakage 1.7%, internal resistance is 56 to 57 milliohms, electrolytic capacitor, 16 volts, 2200 microfarads, actual capacitance is 2200, leakage is 3.6%, internal resistance is 63 milliohms, perfect. Things are also going well with the small electrolytic capacitors. Slightly elevated internal resistance is completely normal for such a small capacitance. Now we'll put all this together and start it up. First, through a safety lamp. As we can see, everything is humming and the output voltages are present. Next, we remove the input lamp and connect. The load. I've already moved all my equipment to my new workshop slash studio. But I haven't moved there myself yet, so filming is a bit inconvenient. I apologize for that. I loaded the 12 volt bus with a powerful rheostat. The load current is 7.5 amps, and the 5 volt line with an electronic load at 20 amps. As we can see, there are no significant voltage drops on these power lines. The unit delivers the stated currents. I wanted to leave the unit running for hours at maximum load, but I changed my mind. I'll send this old timer into a well deserved retirement. After all, its time has already passed. I also measured the ripple on the 5 volt line at the maximum current of 20 amps. Considering the influence of the wires, I got approximately 1 and 2, 1 and a half volts from peak to peak. This might be slightly high, but I've seen sources where this figure is much higher. Conclusions It's not accurate to say that this power supply is radically different from modern counterparts of the same class, because it isn't. The technologies of that period were different, and the presence of two boards and large components is not a reason to overly praise such a source. But it should be taken into account that this was made about 30 years ago, and the best components of that time were used. Even by today's standards, the components are quite decent. The topology is classic, but I can't specifically comment on the reliability of the circuit solutions. To do that, a more detailed study of the source is needed, along with a series of tests, and, of course, running the unit in a computer. One thing to keep in mind is that computers back then didn't heat up as much as modern ones. The unit fully meets the stated specifications. High repairability, well thought out cooling, all connections on. Connectors! It's interesting, why were they able to make decent, competitive things 30 years ago, but now everyone seems to have forgotten how? Yes, I know there are some among you who will say, what did we have? Soviet devices were, stillborn from the start, we stole everything from the West, and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look around. Right now, everything surrounding you is made in China. And what, did the Chinese invent Chinese devices? No, most of them were copied. And the quality is SOSO. But we use them and don't really complain. Think about that. As for the fact that the world's most powerful industry was plundered, and privatized, I think facts. Obvious. That's all from me. Don't forget to share this video with friends, thereby supporting the release of new videos. And subscribe to my Instagram. More reviews about retro technology can be found in the corresponding playlist. All useful links can be found in the description. And with that, I can only say goodbye. As always, this was Kazyanov Ka, with you and see you next time. Bye.